Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time, my buddy uh, Dustin sent me his, um, he, he's successfully um, removed the uh, reflective layer on his Game Boy Pocket here, and he's backlit it. And um, he's decided that he wants to actually do two mods in particular. Uh, so the first one is I'm going to be installing this um, Bivert chip. Uh, so currently he just has the polarizer set up so that it doesn't invert the image. And it looks pretty good to me actually. If you see the um, image is nice and bright. Um, the blacks aren't, you know, totally dark. But um, you can see just as a comparison, this is my biverted unit. And you can see pretty easily um, just how uh, much more contrast a uh, biverted unit has. Uh, so I'm going to do that bivert for him. And additionally, a lot of these units have uh, trouble with um, biasing the LCD because once you had the backlight, the original 5-volt internal converter was never made to really support a backlight. Uh, so it's struggling as it is. So additionally, he'd sent me this guy here. Uh, which is a 5 volt um, converter. It's a step up converter, boost converter. So I'm going to take this guy and um, dedicate this just for the backlight and the original 5 volt one will basically be running the system as if it were stock. Uh, so this will help with um, um, units that will drain, you know, shut off the dim the backlight too early when the batteries start dying as well as uh, decrease contrast. So overall this is going to be a super Game Boy by the time I'm done with it. First step we need to do though is um, get this guy open, so let's do that. Okay, here we are inside. You can see he has a little resistor going to the plus 5 volts and ground currently, which is basically pulling 5 volts from this main regulator here. Now what I'm going to end up doing is desoldering the positive and soldering it to the positive of this regulator now. Going to do the 5 volt mod first and then the bivert because the 5 volt mod I need access to you know the backlight wires in the front side of the board for now. Anyway, um, let's just get into it. Now these little regulators are um, basically boost converters. There's a uh, middle pin is ground then there's uh, V in and V out. So V in is going to go to the um, positive side of the switch uh, so it's going to grab the 3 volts from the battery, and then V out will be the 5 volts just for the backlight, though. And ground can obviously go to any ground point on the board. Uh, so, first step, iron's all heated up. Just going to carefully remove this guy. So, it just goes straight down like this, so that means ground is this bottom pin. Um, let's see... VCC is this top pin here. And VDD, so VCC is your battery voltage. Anyway, the upper right pin will go to VN. Uh, ground will go to this bottom pin, which is definitely labeled 3 here. Okay, so I soldered the two wires, so the uh, battery voltage in uh, to VN. The middle pin is ground, so it goes to ground. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of double stick tape and just stick it on top. So this guy is just going to stick roughly on top there. Make sure that it actually does fit. If not, we'll need to move stuff around, which looks like we will. It looks like there's not enough room directly on top of that, but... Okay, so what we're probably going to end up having to do is actually relocate this over to this other side anyway. The, uh, the inductor here is actually quite a bit taller than I estimated, so there's just not quite enough room. If these caps weren't here, it'd be fine, but we're going to have to cut some longer wires and uh, finagle some stuff out of the way. So let me get that done and set up. Okay, just to do a quick test, I lengthened the wires, I screwed everything down. I have it so that you can have the wires hanging out while it's powered on. Do a quick test. Oh, crap, I forgot to put in the power switch. Here. <laughs> just going to turn this on. You can see the backlight still works. 
Um, and this is a positive wire for the backlight, thus it must be coming from the switch mode converter now. So that's step one done. Now we got to do the bivert. Well, first off, find where this can live inside now and then do the bivert. Okay, I was hoping. Take our double-sided tape, uh, fit it the other side of the speaker. So there seems to be quite a bit of space there. The wire kind of is meh placement wise, but it does fully close. So there is enough room there. Still works fine. So we're gonna need to find a different place now for the, uh, the bivert chip because usually they put, when, whenever I've seen mods, they squeeze a bivert chip on there. So anyway, let's uh, just open it. This is going to be quite a bit more involved uh, in terms of the work because we will need to cut some traces on the board. Say I put it right there. That could work. Yeah, we could just mount it right on top of the chip so the wires would be nice and short. So we're going to have to use a thinner double-sided tape. So there, I'll just cut a little square rectangle yeah and I'll just put that on top of the chip for now so we'll need VCC uh, pin 1 pin 3 and then obviously the um, two pins coming from the CPU itself so yeah this will probably be mounted something like this okay yeah so I'm gonna link in a uh, image in the description and probably pop it up on screen or something of um, exactly what wires what the wiring is going to be in I found a, um, a nice image hosted by uh, handheld legend and they sell these uh, bivert chips as well and uh, what we are going to do is on this uh, chip here uh, pins four and five so one two three four five uh, so where this arrow is pointing down and then the pin to the right of it we need to cut those traces I'm probably going to cut them about here and here um, and then we will uh, commence with splicing it into here. Okay, so I had this really nice um, Laboratory exacto blade set. We're just going to take a um, very fine uh, Blade and we are going to cut um, Those two traces that I said were uh, connected to pins four and five from the counting from the right on this chip the top side where this white arrow points down right in there and it might actually help to just get the the uh, tip of the blade centered and do circular motions to sort of create like a drill hole and we're gonna measure to double check that we actually got all the metal and severed it there we go Nothing? Nothing. Okay, so these are successfully cut now. Give you guys a nice close up of that. You can see the white part. It looks like I got a little close to that one trace next to it, but um, by eye, I can see I didn't touch it, so that's fine. So those two traces are severed now, so we can commence uh, with how exactly to wire this. So first off, we're going to need to grab ground and um, VCC. There we go. So I know this is ground. So yeah, we can grab it from this tiny little square that's right next to the chip. So this guy right here put a little bit of solder on that. Wire down and we're good to go. So now we have ground. Now we're going to need VCC. So this cap right here, the bottom side is uh, VCC. So we can grab five volts from there. Here, let me show you up close. This cap C12, the side closest to the chip is uh, five volts. And voila. 
we have uh, VCC and ground now. Now there's no image on the screen obviously because uh, we cut those two wires. <laughs> Audio still works though, so the Game Boy still works, it's just we removed the two necessary wires for that. So remember these um, these two traces we cut? We're going to need to solder wires to them. One of them is going to be actually pretty difficult. Uh, it's going to be the one without the hole next to it. The other one with the hole, you could just solder to the hole, which is actually a lot easier. So I'm just going to cut a bit of length of wire that can wrap around or whatever. Made the one to the left that's harder to make uh, because we had to solder directly to the pin of the IC. What you could alternately do is scrape off. There's a bit of trace I left in between where I made the cut. You could scrape that off and solder to that. Um, but whatever floats your boat. On the other end and the other wire goes just into that hole I filled with solder. There we go. That one was super easy. So now, uh, looking at the diagram, um, the left hole goes into uh, this left pin, and then the right one goes into the, the right uh, pin 3, I believe. So here you can see they're actually labeled. So pin 1, pin 3. Pin 1 goes into the uh, left one, which is this wire, which is actually right because I'm holding it upside down. And then the one that's harder to solder goes into 3. Okay. So right now, you can see the state that it's in. Basically, the left wire goes to the bottom hole and the top hole goes to the right wire there, um, rather the right trace, so pins 5 and 4. So now we're going to have to solder to the top side. So both of these we're going to unfortunately have to solder to the actual uh, pins on the fl flat flex connector. Uh, so it's going to be pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, in this case 5 and 6. So grab a two more lengths of uh, Kynar, and these will have to go to these uh, flat long pads on the bottom here. So make them a little bit longer. So then we have a left and a right, so pin six and five from this end here. Um, Let's see. So, kind of goes uh, si pin six on this connector, which is the left hand one right now, goes to the bottom of these two joints here. And then pin five, the one on the right, goes to the top one. So, we're just going to do exactly that. So you can see right there, they pretty much just go right in a row. So now we have all the wires soldered here. Moment of uh, truth. Let's just throw the back on, throw some batteries in, and hope, keep forgetting to put that power switch in. Hope that it um, shows up. Yeah. So here you can see the image is inverted actually, and that's because we didn't flip the polarizing filter. So that is the very last step, is uh, first off, turn it off, and open it up, get access to the LCD, and rotate the filter 90 degrees. Just take a look at it. Yeah, it should look pretty much pitch black now when the screen's off. And we're going to run another quick test before screwing everything back together. When you're modding Game Boy Pockets especially, you want to check often after you do a little bit of a 
modification either to wiring or the screen or whatever you want to recheck. <laughs> As all the buttons almost fall out. So let's see. There you go. You can see just how much darker the screen is now. Uh, the contrast is a lot higher. It's a bit more purpley uh, on the camera, but in real life it looks pretty black to me. That looks pretty good. I'd say that this is pretty much done. Oops. So let's uh, button this back up and uh, do a little bit of gaming to uh, make sure that all, all the wiring that we did will last. Okay, so we are all back together, and uh, let's just do another quick test. One thing to note is um, when I put it back together, the backlight adds a little bit of thickness, so when you go to close it up, it'll press against the polarizing filter and the glass of the screen. So if I didn't do anything, um, what ended up happening is when I just closed it, you would see like little rings, and you could definitely see it looks like water damage, little splotches, um, on the screen where the pressure is pressing. Basically, the easy way to fix that, my friend Rourke had taught me, if you use a little bit of like a baby powder or something like that, and you just lightly dust the polarizing filter on both sides, when you put it in, it prevents the, uh, the polarizing filter from sitting perfectly flat. There are tiny little like microscopic bumps that keep it off the glass surface. So that'll prevent it from making those rings. So here you can see it looks absolutely perfect now. And um, yeah, you can see the image. It's nice and crisp, high contrast. It looks really nice. The green, actually, yeah, that's interesting. When I hold it out, the green that it looks on the screen right now is pretty close to in real life. When I zoom in, for instance, when I bring this closer to the camera lens, it shifts more blue than it looks in real life. In real life, it looks more like this. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have all the details um, and extra high resolution pictures if you guys want to attempt this to yourself. Um, down in the description below, I'll include links for all that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.